What is up mga Pipop Song and Chang? Welcome back to the channel. And today, what we're going to talk about is the 5,000 kilometers review of the CF Moto 800 MT. using the CF Moto 800 MT since November of 2022 so basically it means that it's been with me for a couple of months now I've been through a lot of adventures with this guy for that past couple of months so um, I went to uh, Quezon province I went to Marilake I went to Nueva Ecija and of course last but not least is the Iloilo ride so I went to Iloilo, Katiklan, Calibo, Guimaras and went back to Antique and going back to Manila. So I think I'm more than qualified to say that I can actually talk about the performance in the, in the past 5,000 kilometers of this bike. And by the way, this bike is named Magnus. So um, one of my followers actually named it. So shout out, Papi. So of course, before anything else, let's talk about the specs. The CF Moto 800 MT is a four-stroke parallel twin derived to KTM 790 Adventures LC8 engine, dual overhead cam, and four valve per cylinder. It has a maximum capacity of 799 cc with a bore stroke of 800 mm by 65.7 mm. And it has a max power of 95 horsepower at 9,250 RPM and a max torque of 75 Nm at 8,000 RPM. And what keeps the bumps away is a 43 mm KYB upside down forks which is fully adjustable with a 160 mm of travel. For the rear suspension, it's also KYB, monoshock, and then I'm not really sure but I think it's semi-adjustable. And it has a 150 mm travel. So that's what actually makes the ride comfortable. Stopping the bike, it's a 320 millimeters twin disc G1 four piston radial calipers, and for the rear, it's a 260 millimeters rear disc J1 twin piston caliper with cornering ABS. And for the tires, it's equipped with the Maxxis Max Venture tubeless, which is 110 by 90 up front and 150 by 70 at the back. And for the bike's weight, it's actually 231 kilograms. It's kind of heavy, but it's understandable since this is an adventure bike. It has a 19-inch tires up front. Come on. The wheelbase is 1,531 millimeters, and the seat clearance is 825 millimeters. So um, it's kind of tall. And for what keeps the bike going, this, this bike has a 19 liters of fuel capacity which in my experience translate to around 265 kilometers at full tank. So there's actually a couple of things that I really want to talk about in terms of my experience with this bike. Number one is a vibration. Although we all know that this is a parallel twin, so basically it will have vibration because it's not an inline four which has less vibration. It's very apparent at the early stage of the break-in period. After your first 1,000 kilometers, it will lessen. I mean, it will not go away, but it will definitely lessen big much. And uh, the second thing that I wanted to talk about on, on my experience is the quick shifter. This, this bike is equipped with quick shifter up and down. So it has auto bleep, uh, auto bleep and quick shifter. Um, on the first 1,000 kilometers of this bike, actually the quick shifter feels funky or it doesn't feel right sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't feel right, sometimes it's okay, sometimes it's very smooth and but most of the time it's really hard like to do some upshift, especially if you're coming from first gear or second gear. So um, at the first 1,000 kilometers I find it really hard to use it but after the first 1,000 kilometers, actually, it's really smooth right now. Although, there are times that the, the power cut or the fuel cut 
when you upship, sometimes it feels kind of weird when you're uh, in fourth gear going to fifth gear. Sometimes it's kind of like, I'm not really sure how to, how to put this, it's kind of delay. So I actually talked to the dealership about that and uh, they said that they're gonna take a look at it. So yeah. And the next thing I want to talk about is the rear brake and the rear ABS. <laughs> For some reason, the rear ABS is uh, very intrusive. And there was this experience that I had that I just lightly tap the rear brake and the ABS goes crazy. I mean, I know that it's trying to keep me safe, but I mean, ABS are very intrusive. Although, it really doesn't really bother me that much. That's why maybe I'm not complaining about it in the dealership. Um, but yeah, it's very intrusive. I mean, for me, it's not too bothersome, but for some, it might be. Especially for those people who go through off-road, go trail using this big of a bike, big, which, which for me, um, I don't plan on doing so. <laughs> but yeah, it's very intrusive. Okay, and that's about it for the slightly negative stuff <laughs> about this bike. So let's talk about the positive stuff. And number one is the power. To be honest, I'm very happy about the power. Thanks to the ride by wire technology, the engine is very, uh, the, the engine feels very, very responsive. So whenever I hit that throttle, actually, it always gives me a big smile on my face. With that um, 75 Newton meters of torque and the 95 horsepower, to be honest, I'm quite satisfied with it. I mean, you don't really expect to go like 200 kilometers with this bike because technically it's not built for that, but it can. You're not expected to do like speeding with this bike because it's not built for that. However, for long highway miles and long travels, this bike is gonna take care of you real good. And the third thing that I like about this bike is the tech. Number one is the cruise control. Yay for cruise control. To be honest, I never had a bike with cruise control before, so this is actually a first for me. Maybe that's why I'm very, very happy about it. Um, especially when you go like uh, highway riding, it, it feel, I mean, I did mention about vibration. Sometimes for a, if you ride for a prolonged period of time, you, you, you'll definitely start to feel that vibration taking over your hands. So with, with cruise control, it's actually save you from that worry. So, um, especially when I was in Iloilo and there's this like around uh, 300 kilometer stretch of road um, I just like uh, I, I just use my cruise control <laughs> I set it to 80 and 90 and then I left it as it is <laughs> and the next thing I like about this bike is actually the TFT display but this one it's, it's just a simple it has a simple laid out but I mean the most important part of it is that it has all the information that you will need Number one that I really love about it is that it gives you the idea of how far can you still go with your motorcycle. And that is like the approximate miles or kilometers that, that your fuel can take you. That one I really love it. Although it's not the most accurate and sometimes it's kind of finicky. Sometimes it's kind of like uh, it, it gives you 150 then after five minutes it gives me like 130. So, I mean, where did, the, where did the 20 kilometers go? But, I mean, you still have a good grasp of how long or how far can you still go with your current fuel. And last but not Pretty good looking bike. So over the course of the ownership, so from November, so December, then I have already March, April, May, so it's been six months since I had this bike. And the only things that I actually replaced and added here is that number one, I added a radiator guard because that is very important, especially when you go off-roading. Uh, you don't want any stones to go to your radiator and just break it up, right? So you need the radiator guard. Number two is the ox light. The auxiliary lights. This is very important. Um, actually, the, the 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 headlight of this bike is very bright. If I mean, it, it can work. However, 
Sometimes when it's really dark, you really need to have another light. Besides this fog lamp, I mean, if you have a choice to change the bulb, that's better. But as it is, no. And the next thing I added is the crash guard. So this crash guard is from Biker Toys. And for those who is uh, living uh, in the States or in Australia, you can buy this at Alibaba or AliExpress. It's, a, it's an extended crash guard because this bike comes with uh, a stock uh, crash guard already. You just need to buy the extended ones so you can, yeah, you can install it. It's actually pretty easy to install. So it's just plug and play. So this is the only one that I actually replaced or so removed, but this uh, SE project and an elbow resonator. This is the only thing that I replaced so far with this bike. Um, and I don't plan on changing anything else because I love the way it looks stock. Maybe in the near future, I will go for a wrap, but other than that, no, I'm not gonna change anything. And since we are talking about Nexus, so let's have a quick sound check, right? That sounds good, right? <laughs> So over the course of six months of owning this bike and after 5,000 kilometers, all I can say is that if I'm gonna rate it, I'm gonna rate it nine over 10. Of course, no one and nothing is perfect. That's why I'm not rating it 10 by 10, but I'm rating it nine by 10. Number one, it's because of the cost. I mean, this bike here, here in the Philippines, it only costs around 578,900. And if you compare the price tag of this bike to an, to other brands 800 cc i don't know this this one is very cheap i mean some other brands are like 800,000 900,000 and this one is just 578 and you and you'll get all the things like cruise control quick shifter up and down you have cornering abs you have the skid plate crash guard you have the heated seat and heated grips and all that stuff so that's why it's a nine for me so if you're looking for your first adventure bike and you're looking at 650 to 800 cc i would definitely suggest you take this one the cf moto 800 mt and there are actually an, a new variant uh, a new variant coming in the philippines which is the cf moto 800 mt explore which has uh, a lot more tech it has three riding modes it has traction control it has the capability to on and off abs and traction and it also has the anti-collision radar up front and uh, it has more tech technically although it, it's gonna be priced a little bit higher than this one so maybe around um, 650,000 plus in philippine peso the again this is only 578,900 i mean it's just a little higher than the uh, 800 MT Touring. So going back to what I was saying uh, is that I really recommend this bike because number one, it has the power to not uh, to not make you feel like you want another bike because it has a 95 horsepower and 75 Nm torque. And the comfort level of this one is really good, to be honest. If you're thinking about like Kawasaki 650 versus this one, I would definitely go towards this one, not with the Kawasaki. Although, yes, uh, the re the re reliability of the of the Kawasaki is proven all throughout the years because Kawasaki versus 650 has been in the market for a long year for a long time <clears throat> compared to this one that this this guy was introduced in the market way back 2019 or 2020. That's why I do I do understand that there is a bit of skepticism about about the brand especially its origin. But let me tell you this, guys. This bike, although it's a CF Moto, it's made in China, it's not a bad bike. The, re the reliability issue, especially here in the Philippines, is not really a concern because Motostrada is doing a great job in terms of servicing these bikes. And in terms of parts, I don't believe that there's a shortage of parts. Although, although there will be some time that, that the dealership needs to order the parts abroad there will be some of those times but that doesn't make the bike bad and in terms of reliability i never had any problem with this bike during my 5000 and i know some people might say it's just 5000 kilometers but for me to be honest 5000 kilometers 
this bike hasn't given me any headache, like not any at all. That's why I think for the reliability of this bike, I think this bike is reliable. And of course, part of it is because of the engine. The engine is an LC8 engine. So, I mean, that's a KTM LC8 proven engine. So, guys, I mean, if you're still doubtful about that, I don't know anymore. So, to wrap things up, again, I believe after 5,000 kilometers that this bike is number one reliable, comfortable, the power is good, and this is truly a recommendable bike. So everyone out there, if you're looking for your first adventure bike or your second adventure bike, give Seat Moto 800 MT a try. With that being said, thank you very much for watching. And please don't forget to hit that like, share, and subscribe to support my channel. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Ciao.